So right now we're printing a uh, oblong gear. It's kind of a traditional gear that we stretched out in, in CAD, and it's being made out of frosting. We've done everything from chocolate and peanut butter and hummus to scallops and celery and turkey. So the real key is with 3D printing, it needs to start as a semi-liquid, so a batter or a dough or a uh, I think the technical term is emulsion. So let's take some uh, traditional masa corn dough. It's pretty simple, you can get it anywhere. It works pretty well just because it has the right level of surface tension and viscosities where it's self-supporting but is willing to be extruded out and folded shape. So this way it can kind of like link itself in these curled patterns so that when we lift it up and put it in the deep fryer, it kind of holds that pattern. So we want to use as traditional, simple, off-the-shelf foods as we can to get people used to the idea of 3D printing foods. 3D printing is estimated at most to become a three billion dollar a year industry by 2016 uh, or 2018. But food is already a over two trillion dollar a year industry globally. It's absolutely massive, completely different scale. If 3D printing can have an impact on food, it could dwarf its current impact.